this feels better. This is the Remarkable 2 on the left, and this is the Tab Ultra on the right. We're just going to take a casual look at both of these guys to see how they both kind of stack up against each other. Now, to give you guys some info, this is a e-note, and that's it. This is a full-blown tablet with an e-paper screen, meaning you have Google Play, you have Android 11, you have an SD card slot, you have onboard audio, you have two different colors of glow light, you have microphone, you have gyroscope, accelerometer, basically everything a tablet has because it is a tablet. Now the downside about that in comparison to this is that we can't show anything on this compared to this. We can't show videos, we can't show games, we can't show X mode, we can't show any sort of contrast alterations because the Ultra just has more features and is basically more feature packed and bells and whistles packed in every single way compared to the Remarkable. So all we can really show is the note taking experience which we're going to focus on. Now with the Remarkable it is a rather slow and sluggish experience because they don't really prioritize processor and RAM and anything like that and it's really old. The Remarkable 2 although has a heavy advertisement campaign behind its back is actually pretty devoid of anything. It just has note taking and that's it. You can do some ebooks and you can do some PDFs with very very surface level features but that's essentially it all you have is note taking when the remarkable 2 came out it was remarkable it was kind of the go to they were showing you that this is the true e note and it feels like paper although it it doesn't 4k and 8k advertisements aside this does not feel like pen on paper at all neither does this that would be reserved for the plastic screens like the Mimus, the Remarkable One, the King Jim Freno, the Moby Scribe, the Quaderno, the Sony. Those all have true paper-like experiences. This doesn't. So that little guy on the video who has a British accent that says the first e-reader that feels like paper, it, it doesn't. It just feels like you're writing on glass. Same with the Onyx. In fact, this one is even more glass-like. It's very slippery. Now, the tips on both of these and this one that we're using, which is an iReader pen, are exactly the same. They're all made by iReader. So the tips for the Remarkable 2, the Onyx Pen 2 Pro, the iReader X Pen SE, it's all the same. Exact same thing. The only difference is the weight in your hand. So that's neither here nor there. On the Remarkable, you have a couple pens here. You can choose from your pens. If you tap right there, you get seven or eight pens there and you get different line thicknesses and three colors. You also get the eraser. You get a isolating zone and you have a back and then down here you can click some more. So you have go to page. We can go back right there and you have a couple layers and then you have export or send. You can do screen share, send by email, convert text and send. And you can do the one down here, which is the final page, which is add new page, notebook settings and switch to landscape mode. The Onyx will take us 15 years to go through because it has every single thing the Remarkable has, but 10 times more. So there's a lot to go over on this. You have layers all the same. So let's just compare kind of one by one. So if we go to layers here, let's see how many layers we can add on both of these, including the template layer, which has a layer, what it would act as a layer basically. So if we add layers, you get six layers total and on here you get six layers. So that's all good. That's all well and the same. In terms of pens, if we go down to shape, nope, over here pens. So the Onyx allows you to customize pens. So when you go on the Remarkable, you can choose a pen and that's it. If I choose pencil, I have pencil. But on the Onyx, you can go over here and actually customize each pen. So I can do highlighter on this one with a thick bleed and out of the 12 odd colors we have actually we have more we have 16 colors whereas the remarkable has three you can choose a gray highlighter i want paintbrush with a mid-range and a dark gray i want the ballpoint pen to be super thick with a super dark gray i want the pencil to be light with maybe a light gray and finally i want the marker to be mid-range with a red like that and you can toggle between these pens seamlessly so i can go highlighter i can go pencil I can go like this to marker and you can switch between them as you see fit. That's a very, very instant experience. And only one other manufacturer does that. And that would be the Fujitsu Quaderno that allows you to do two pens. And that's really the maximum. 
if you go over here to the eraser, you can erase everything. You can erase all layers and wipe everything away. You can do really the same thing on here. If you click here, you can click on erase all and everything vanishes. However, on the Remarkable, it only erases all on the layer, doesn't erase all layers. So Onyx has that little extra thing there, whereas the Remarkable does not. If you go to line thicknesses, you can choose your thicknesses and it does have pressure sensitivity as well. So that's really nice. The Remarkable has something that the Onyx does not, and that is this dusting. If you tilt your pen, it actually recognizes the tilt and changes the thickness and pressure sensitivity parameters to allow you to do this dusting. And that's really cool. No other manufacturer does that, but that's really all the Remarkable has going for it. In fact, even to use this unit, you have to pay a monthly fee on your credit card, which recently has been kind of altered back and forth, left and right. The prices have been changed, the tiers have been changed, all that. So if we go here now, we're going to go to a new page. So let's open up a new page on our book here because we want a secondary page and we're going to draw something just in the middle here. So I'm just going to draw this scribble and I'll go here and I'm going to box it with an area like that once more. Now I've boxed it. I can move that around. I can expand it. I can copy it. I can cut it. I can paste it on a new page. That's really cool. Onyx has the same kind of feature. You can go like that, go to the lasso tool, wrap it around and you get more options here. You can actually change the overall dimensions and you get a lot more things up here. You get tag, undo, redo. You can change the colors of it. You can cut, copy, paste, and you can go here and flip vertically, flip, flip horizontally. So this is more of like a paint experience where you get additional features to actually change everything. So that's really nice. You also get zoom, you get insert as well. So you can insert pictures. So I can go over here, insert the little Android guy, plomp it on the page, go to back, pick my pen and start editing the Android guy like that. So that's really nice. You can't do any of that on the Remarkable because you can't add anything into the actual the actual canvas it won't let you do any of that so there's really no way to do anything like that but we both do have text conversion which we're going to show you right now so let's grab a pen and write my name on both of these so we got that and we'll grab a fine liner exact same on both of these so on the remarkable you have to go down to here always forget where it is and then you have to convert to text and send then what it's going to ask you is what is your subscription plan and if you click on connect you actually have to purchase a plan in order to convert the text so you you have to use your credit card monthly get billed monthly in order to convert the text so we're really not able to do that in the here and now whereas on the onyx we can go down here to ai and once you click on it in about two seconds it converts it so that's a pretty stark difference now you do have a bunch of different ways you can do things here you can do original which has it exactly where you wrote it in the way that you wrote it and you can bold italicize underline etc you can go back here to AI and you can do reflow and it's going to actually reflow it to the top left corner, in which case you can choose the fonts, you can choose the line spacing, the type of way you wrote it, whether it's American keyboard, etc. And you can continue typing over here. You can go like that and you can just kind of write away, write the night away. You can even go like this and actually write with the pen, a P and then a P will throw up there. So it's, there's tons of different ways you can kind of continue your scripting and continue your kind of dictation with that. Another thing that the Onyx has is canvas. You can actually stretch the canvas. For example, if I wanted a one by two stacked on top and I draw something here, I can actually move the canvas down and say, what's down here again? Oh yeah, that's right. And then if I don't like it, I can move it back and I can actually add to the canvas in any direction we wish up and down, left and right, or even custom three by three, four by four, etc. So that's really cool. You also have a variety of shapes. So you have pentagon, you have a, a trapezoid, you have a square or rectangle, you have a hexagon, etc. Now when you choose something, you can also choose the thickness and the type of which it actually lines up. So if I go like this and I do a line, that's going to be an isosceles or whatever triangle with a bunch of dots. But if I'm doing drafting and I say, well, I want my red square to be a little bit thicker with a different type of line and I can do that. 
So it really does save you the time of grabbing this and, you know, doing little dots yourself. So being being there for you, even though you don't necessarily need it, is invaluable because the amount of settings here, 16 colors and, and seven different lines and all these shapes and arrows and everything, I mean, it's, it's really jam-packed with everything you're going to need. Also on the Onyx, when you're done drawing something, you click share and simply you're able to just share it with any app. So you can share it with Kindle or, or WhatsApp or Gmail or Outlook or Facebook Messenger or, or Line or basically anything. And you just simply share it and it goes directly to it. You can share this and send it to your phone immediately and that will show up on there. The Remarkable can't do any of that because it doesn't have any apps or any other sharing methods. So when it comes down to it, I would say that it's it's not even close at this point. And this isn't about obviously Onyx is a hyper tablet, but it's the fact that Remarkable has had its time in the sun and it's it's over. It honestly is over. And we love Remarkable. We compare it to Remarkable. We use Remarkables where we have a connection with Remarkable. It's it's a great unit. But it's it's 15 minutes of fame is completely gone. There's just nothing a Remarkable can do anymore. And this isn't a bash at Remarkable. This is real. This is real. The only thing Remarkable has is that tilt and the fact that this feels better than the Onyx. Is it a paper-like feel? No, not by a long shot. Neither is the Onyx. Oh, I'm on the arrow there. This is good. The writing experience on this is good. The writing experience on this is better. But that's where it ends. There's no glow light. There's no speed modes. There's nothing you can do. And this even looks and performs in every conceivable, measurable metric better than the Remarkable. It's bigger. It's kind of flat and cumbersome this is more compact and tight and it's just a better thing and this isn't a advertisement for onyx we're not paid by anyone in the industry out of the 39 brands we deal with we do not do paid reviews here at goody reader this is simply a realistic look between something that does everything and everything the remarkable can do and more with google play videos the e-ink center with x mode glow lights onboard audio contrast controls ultra fast refresh hd mode whereas the remarkable can't do do anything so we just want to make it apparent to you guys that it's not even about buying the onyx tab it's just don't buy the remarkable anymore devices like an old Mimus by Boyu, an old remarkable one or two a super note those are devices that just they don't matter anymore because they simply don't do anything and a lot of you guys are asking us why do you keep saying that because we have to drive the point home people buy this and then they say, oh, I didn't know this existed. Or I didn't know Big Me with Goody Reader existed. I didn't know High Read existed. I didn't know Quaderno existed. They're missing out by buying something they're trapped with that they have to pay monthly on or that has no customer service or that has no support or they don't even come with a pen on the Remarkable. You have to buy a pen separately. There's just no real merit to a Remarkable anymore compared to not even the tab, but everything else that is available in the e-reader ether. So I hope this opened your guys' eyes to what a device like an Onyx can do compared to something that's just kind of long in the tooth and just a little bit dead in the water like a Remarkable 2. For GoodyReader.com, this is Peter.